Trying to make it look like an accident. Yeah, they, there was, for years it was an accident. They say, they even say, you remember, I told you, they even said that he changed from a commercial plane to that plane. Yeah. Yeah. But you it, don't buy that. Yeah, I don't buy that because I knew that he it even had a second airplane, right. and I knew that, that this is from a this is something that the journalists want to believe. Also, this is also a part. Along with the fight against the judiciary system, I also had a fight with my fellow colleagues as a professional, as a professional journalist. I'm not well considered because I argue with them because I say to them, listen, if you're not lying, it's because you don't do your investigation. Otherwise, if you say things that you, not, that you know it's not true, then you are lying. If you are not lying and you are saying something which is a lie, then you are just, you come to the conclusion. They don't lie. They are just... <laughs> so they didn't care how many people they killed. They, the lowest that made it look like an accident. Yeah, there was seven people uh, lives that were taken that day, right. along with the Prime Minister and the Minister of Defense. There were their two wives and the two pilots and the Chief of Cabinet, uh, Alexandre Pat uh, uh, Antonio Patricio Gouveia, brother of, all, of Alexandre Patricio Gouveia, who is, was a very hard uh, investigator in the, in the, was the one who uh, work and struggle for there would be a commission then the situation would not disappear from our minds uh, we have that thing to owe to him but the thing is what we know so far is that someone did a bomb José Esteves said he did a bomb on those days but he his did. bomb his bomb was not used I don't know I don't maybe think. it was a patsy it no, could be no, proper no. it could be I don't I don't I don't Listen, there is a technicality yeah. that even in, Portugal, even in Portugal, even in Portugal, for 30 years, we discussed if there was a bomb or not in the plane. But we already knew that 30 minutes after, with that debris thing. Yeah, but Jose says he picked up a whole bunch of... $300,000. José says that he got money from Frank Sturz in right. a yacht in Cascais. The bomb. Yeah, to make a bomb. Okay. Right. Maybe Frank paid him in order for him to be the patsy. Okay. One thing that Fern that José says to me yeah, when who was the real hitman if he was the patsy? The real hitman may be somebody from. Uh, he then claims that there was somebody with remote control, or there was a a bomb that was placed underneath the plane, because he and uh, want to yeah, he don't know. He don't that he murdered all these people. José José was a fighter uh, against the communists. He in Angola. His his house was offered to him the rent with a rent his house was offered to him by the minister of defense that died in the plane crash he was his bodyguard right he uh, jose according to what we know and this is a fact was devastated and the first thing that he went to say to fernando was we were fooled we were duped he believed that he was doing a bomb like he always did in order to provoke psychological fear not to kill he didn't kill nobody and he's Today he wants to believe that he didn't kill nobody in Camarat, that wasn't his bomb. And he feels guilty about that thing or he feels that people don't understand him. Yeah, that right. is why the reason there is the, to, to all this situation. And that is a drama for José. And that is also what I try to interview when I inter interview him. I try to captivate that contradict contradictory and paradox situation. But José worked along with the judiciary police for many years after. He was very useful to them in order to what? To discreditate Camarat. To make, to dupe the journalists also. José is a very good disinformist. He does that well. He was very useful for the judiciary police. Maybe now he's angry with them? Okay. But that is also another question that he raised also. Why did the police the judiciaria? let old Camarat be uh, an accident and let the Portuguese parliament come to the conclusion it was a murder. <laughs> Contradictions of our here in Portugal also. Lisbon Gate is full of this. And when did Simone's confession Com uh, It's like 30 page confession. Yeah, uh, he confessed that in 2012, I do believe, 2011. Yes. Yeah, he was in jail for other mi motives. Right. And uh, Simone has been confessing all uh, Drip by drip, we can say, right. little by little.
because then you have to think the statutes of limitation here in Portugal for a murder is 15 years. So in 1995 had finished, but there was still going a, a public petition not to finish, so they investigated for 10 more years, till 2005. In 2006 it had finished, even if they were now evidence, the only process is a political process. Nobody in Portugal would have been arrested for this murder. What happened, and this is why probably they don't want to release the documents in CIA, is the political consequences. Yes, I do believe that is very important, right. even to the world in Iran. Right. If you come to the conclusion that there was an October surprise deal, that the Reagan, Bush Reagan campaign w uh, negotiated with the uh, Ayatollah Khomeini uh, to not release the hostage and prevent Jimmy Carter of winning the elections in 1980, right, right. and along with guns to fight against Saddam Hussein in Iraq, and those guns went through Portugal and the Portuguese Prime Minister and Minister of Defense were killed in the bomb uh, crash of a plane. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I don't know why Hollywood hasn't done a story about this. Why, you know, the movie with Ben Affleck, Argo, about, it's about this situation, but it's not about all these situations, it's about only, not about the 52 hostage. That would be a great, even far greater history than for an Oscar. But it's about only the six that got away. And in the end of the movie Argo, best movie of Hollywood, you just have a, a dark screen saying the, the, other two, uh, the other 252 hostages were released 444 days. And they didn't even say that they was the swearing in of Ronald Reagan. But there was a movie made about Camarade. There was a Portuguese movie made about Camarade. And who did they blame it on? The, the movie didn't come to a conclusion. It's a movie about the 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 the, the surroundings of the, um, uh, the judiciary system, how the judiciary system for 30 years didn't come to a conclusion. But in that movie, there is a character who remembers precisely what I've been saying, that number two on CIA was Frank Carlucci. He had been ambassador right. to Portugal. Ask him. He knows. Right. Yes or no? He knows. He knew the guy who died. He was also involved with, inter with Angola because of the Cuban invasion. Yeah, we have to say, Frank came Frank here to... From, you know, he mm -hmm. fought for Fidel Castro, mm -hmm. with, alongside Fidel Castro, and then uh, was mm -hmm. forced to leave Cuba because Castro put out a shoot-to-kill order on him mm -hmm. when he realized that, uh, that even though Frank was a uh, part of this uh, order, the death of 120 Batistaites mm -hmm. at San Juan Hill, Mm -hmm. uh, he was still, you know, in order to win Castro's credibility, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that he was working for the CIA and trying to, mm -hmm. working on plots to assassinate mm -hmm. uh, Castro. You know, he gave Marita Lorenz a poison capsule. She mm -hmm. was Castro's mistress. Mm -hmm. she, did, she was supposed to put it in his food, but she knew it was going to be a death, a mission that would end in her death. So she said, she threw away the pills and told us Frank that they had uh, melted in uh, her uh, cold cream. Yeah. What, what you is... Know, so, you know, you got Frank being involved in assassination mm -hmm. plots. But what I see, what I see, Frank, and ultimately yeah. in the Kennedy assassination, yeah. Yeah. he bragged to people yeah. that he fired the fatal. What, what I see, Frank, is of is um, before 1972 when he showed up publicly in Watergate, um, he was probably very well connected. Since 1972, he was um, a media man, <laughs> we can say, and. Um, I don't know up to what point, to what extent, uh, Frank was working with the CIA or allow it. He was working very closely with E. Howard Hunt. Yeah, but E. Howard Hunt sued me uh, when I said he mm -hmm. was involved in the okay. Kennedy assassination. He was another one of the Watergate people, mm -hmm. and uh, he claimed I never met Frank Sturgis mm -hmm. until Watergate. Mm -hmm. But on his deathbed, when Hunt confessed to being involved in the CIA mm -hmm. a plot to kill Kennedy, uh, he admitted that he knew Frank Sturgis from 1948, yeah. for years and years. What I do know about the... P the so when they mentioned the name Frank Sturgis, mm -hmm. they didn't just say, hey, let's, who are we going to blame this, this on? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hey, let's find this guy on Watergate. He'd be a good one yeah. to blame it on. Once they named him, then you know these guys are telling the truth. Yeah.
But <laughs> Frank put him up to it, mm -hmm. and the CIA mm. put Frank up to oh, it. Oh, yeah. What I do know about uh, Frank Sturges here in Portugal, like you said, is that when he, w he came here, he was working uh, with the Angolan resistance because uh, after the independence of Angola from Portugal right. in 1975, many Cubans went to Angola in order to fight against the South Africans yes. with yes. guns provided by the Soviets. Yes. So Angola was a Cold War sc scenery. And Frank Sturges, being uh, anti Castro, he was also anti Cubans in Angola. Right. Right. And alongside with the Q uh, Angolans that were against the regime that was in Luanda, the capital of Angola. Now, the thing is... He wanted a base in Angola yeah. where the anti-Castro Cubans could come and train mm -hmm. and uh, fight against Castro. Yeah. Now, the thing is this. There is also, um, as the human nature says, sometimes there is, we have egos, we have uh, a clash of uh, personalities and the uh, the good plans normally are those who are made uh, along as they go, <laughs> you see, improvising. And Frank, for me, who, he was a, it could be a good planning, but he, also, he was also improvising. The story of how many attempts on Castro life and none of them succeeded. When the, we have examples of just in one shot people could succeed, I don't think there was also many will to kill Castro, for instance. No, they wanted to kill yeah, Castro. Yeah, no, there were people that really wanted to kill Castro. Castro had but the, now let me tell you what Castro you said. Castro had the anti-Castro yeah. community infiltrated yeah. with double agents. For instance, yeah, that was also attacking. good. But let me also tell you one thing, and this goes, goes for every, as a lesson we might say from uh, José Esteves, he was a terrorist in 1975, confessed a terrorist, right. that when there is a, a terrorist attack, you have three uh, sides. He who plans, he who executes, and he who allows things to happen. And these three people not every time know each other. So when we see Frank doing something, we have to know if he was planning, if he was executing, or if he was authorizing. And if he was taking in part one of these, maybe he was not taking part on the others. So if he was planning maybe it was not him who executed and authorized it and if it was him who executed maybe it wasn't him who had planned and not authorized it so in Camarat maybe Frank planned it didn't execute it and he doesn't know who authorized it yeah but he had to get the money from someone maybe Either he got it from the guys that authorized but he didn't know where the money came from <laughs> Yeah, follow the money is a very good thing. On Watergate, that worked very well. <laughs> but follow the papers also. We need to get the official papers. That is something that we need as a citizens. Ask, keep on asking. Keep on asking. Until there is a moment when they will have to give us. Well, uh, you know, the, the judge, you know, I don't know. It's, a, it's those are our papers. Yeah. They were made with our money. I mean, not me because I'm not American citizen, but with your money and the American citizen money. So it's about a question of money in America also. So <laughs> let's go on. But, you know, they claim it's the highest. But those documents have the highest. And if it is the highest, if it is the highest, then they this day exist. And that's they good. They even admit that the documents exist. Ah, that or is don't exist. <laughs> No. So they say we cannot either confirm or deny the existence. If they don't exist, they are doing a bad job. They should. Uh, that's the. The judge believes uh, they exist. Yeah. The judge believed they uh, implicated the CIA and Camarata. That I don't after know. After he, I don't know his that. decision. Mm -hmm. You know when he, when he wrote uh, his decision, he said mm -hmm. basically these documents implicate, you know, CIA mm -hmm. in the in this uh, mm -hmm. event. And uh, they need to be classified. So that judge is uh, sensing a crime committed that another state, uh, allied state, come to the conclusion the that there was a murder. The so the judge is hiding a crime? Does he know he's hiding a crime? Yeah, he knows. Okay. He's honest enough to say that. Oh, good for him then. <laughs> you know, Our job is he, ends here. You have to understand, he's <laughs> very, the judge was, Judge Pauly was very pro hmm. intelligence community. Yeah. Uh, the, he ruled in favor of the National Security Administration's mm -hmm. right to put a pen register on everyone's phone oh, good. and to see who they were calling. Mm -hmm. Nice judge. Uh, 
Yeah. You know, so uh, they could put this information together and fight mm. terrorists. Listen, I'm not a paranoid guy thinking that I'm being surveilled and so on. I think if they want to listen, they can listen. I want them to listen to me. Right, right. Yeah, I'm a free mind. <laughs> I want them to listen to me because I'm working on their side, the side of the truth. Now, like Kada said, you can't handle the truth. Well, maybe not, but uh, I will try because someday I just want, uh, want to bring a better world for my children and the rest. You know, I'm, I'm a very egoistic person. I want people around me to be feel happy in order to make me happy. I don't get happy with other people's uh, disgrace. So. I need other people to be happy and then I need to choose to be around me in order for me to live well. And that is why I work and I try and I strive about this. And I hope somebody there will also do. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs>